Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is KPZ, you're here on the home of the Slightly Above Average Ship Review. Want to give a big thanks out to my subscribers. Over 330 on YouTube, although we had a, like two or three people quit and a couple other people join. So thank you to the people who joined. Uh, looking really quickly on Rumble here. We're on Crash Zone. Domination match. We are down tier. Don't be fooled by the Valkyrie. That is a fail division. Also, friends don't let friends fail division. 38 followers on Rumble. So thank you to my Rumble followers as well. All right. We're here in the G101. Why are we in the G101? Well, it's very simple. The current campaign is involving a German premium destroyer, the Z44. It has been rumored to be a torpedo boat. So I am illustrating the benefit of one of the free commanders, uh, Maximilian von Spee, here in the G101, which I would argue to you is also a torpedo boat. So in theory, over the next couple weeks, before the end of the campaign, I'm going to bring some other games and other German premium destroyers using this same commander. Already got one in the can on the ZF-6 a slash torpedo slash anti-AA build and probably Z-35 which is I know a lot of people think it's a gunboat I think it's a tweener um, I've got the Moss W the Moss Winter Edition somehow that's premium ship anyway uh, yeah anyway that and the Z-39 are my gunboats Z-39 kind of like a miniature Elbing the Elbing obviously is not a torpedo boat. So I'm going to bring you those videos in the upcoming weeks. But here we're in the G101, front-mounted torpedo launchers, a unique weapon for this ship and for German destroyers at the low tiers. My suggestion to you is utilize these front-mounted torpedo launchers whenever you can. The enemy destroyer has no counter other than to run away or turn away, which leaves him vulnerable to other sorts of damage. Okay, but the best way to use these is you go right at an enemy destroyer. He can't torp you from the forward position, but you can torp him. All right, I think that's a wakeful over there. We're going to turn and send torpedoes towards the wakeful's intended path. We are spotted. The wakeful is in the middle of putting up a smoke screen. My turrets turn very slowly, so I'm going to launch some more torpedoes. Finally, the turrets come around. The Wakeful Commander very smartly heads toward an island, but not before. He gets absolutely smashed. He is straightening out, um, I guess, to continue trying to run away. So we do miss him with one salvo there. Second salvo, catch him on the tail, set him on fire. I think he damaged Consat. I tried to shoot the moon here through the gap in the rocks. No such luck. All right, so we reverse our turn, going back in, send some more front-mounted launch torpedoes towards the path of the wakeful. Front two turrets are already lined up on target. Salvo number one, knock him down the very nub. Salvo number two, totally missed. <laughs> Salvo number three, we finish him off first blood, kill number one in the G101 and by turning in just that small amount I must have been watching my own videos we avoid lay torpedoes in the water all right premium ship out here at Kanaya Subarov I know I've yet to bring you a Kanaya Subarov match but I will uh, we are moving out this way we also have a Krasny Krim out there which is out of range, and I do not want to attract as many gun barrels my way. So we are going to continue traversing the rather large Bravo cap and capping it out, keeping an eye on the Krasny. Over there, we are going to fling some shells his way, try to set him on fire, maybe get a kill pinch. We do do some damage, but somebody else finishes them off. We will settle for a solo base cap of Bravo. All right, Kanai Subarov, we are going to use the front-mounted launchers on him. We are visible because we fired our guns. 
I have a fully maxed Maximilian von Spee. You can see when the concealment kicks in, our concealment in this ship is 4.5 kilometers. We are going to smoke up and launch our torpedoes, and then we're going to try to gunboat the Kanai Subrov and set them on fire. And I do this as a tactic, hoping they pay more attention to my shooting than my torpedoes and therefore blunder into the path of torpedoes and die a very, very satisfying death. One, two, and we set them on fire. More torpedoes moving on Kanai Subrov. My teammates are desperately trying to kill Pinch. No, it will not happen. Kill number two. Kill number two. He flooded out. All right. So we capped a base, we killed a couple of ships, including a destroyer. I could really just go back to the barn right now and call it a day. But instead, we are pushing out into the great unknown, over towards the Alpha Cap. The red team is down in the Charlie Cap, trying to push on my team over there. There's still an aircraft carrier out there in the wild blue yonder. All right, so here is the Corbet. French battleship, I am moving uh, to engage the Corbet, hoping to get him in torpedo range. I'm gonna do something here that I may end up regretting. Um, I have him in range. I'm pretty confident I've given him enough wiggle room. We are gonna torp one front launcher and both side launchers and then I am going to turn away because I've spotted the aircraft carrier. And in a ship that doesn't have particularly strong AA and the aircraft carrier's got a lot of points and Corbet, I've got five torpedoes headed his way. That should be enough. Okay. So we're moving out towards the aircraft carrier. We are spotted by carrier-based aircraft. They're not trying to engage me, at least not right now. Uh, but I think... The Corbet turned out a little bit at some point. And we're going to watch these torpedoes in the binocular view. Torpedo 1. Torpedo 2. Torpedo 3. Torpedo 4. If I had had all five torpedoes strike the Corbet, we would be talking about kill number 3, possibly a dev strike, but I am too far away to engage the Corbet. I think he's going to survive a whole lot longer in the battle. So that is a regret that I did not take out the Corbet. And maybe I should have hung around a little bit longer. In fact, I think the Corbet just shot at me, set me on fire. We are spotted by those carrier-based aircraft. Corbet is healing up and he's continuing to shoot he at me. I am going to, thank you Apple Watch. I guess I was gyrating in my seat and the, the Apple Watch gave me credit for working out uh, we're, <laughs> we're launching torpedoes towards the Hermes. Uh, I do have an, a Hermes video coming up. Um, I'll just say this. I'm not saying the Hermes is the easiest tier three tech tree aircraft carrier in the game. What I'm telling you is that as a whole, the Royal Navy aircraft carriers are the line you should start with if you haven't played aircraft carriers before. All right, we'll discuss in that video when it comes up. We set the Hermes on fire. We do get a torpedo strike. We unlock the high caliber metal at just 66,000 damage. Continuing to shell the Hermes torpedoes. They're up, they're out, they're all over the place. Who knows what the Hermes is doing. His secondary is actually pretty accurate. Plus, not to mention, he's got those carpet bombing HE bombs which can do in any destroyer, so do not sleep, folks, on that stuff. Anyway, we take out the Hermes right as one of our teammates takes out the core bay. There is only one ship left. So the enemy has a couple of caps. They're way down on points. They're way down on ships. We have imposed our will with the G-101. Further underscoring that even if you are down tier, a skilled destroyer player, just one, can totally swing the outcome of the match. And the remaining ship on the enemy team, 
is also a destroyer. Now it's a Japanese destroyer. It's an Izukazi. I don't think he's been gunboating like I've been gunboating. Admittedly, some of that was from smoke screens. But that being said, I don't think he's had to face what we've had to face in this match in terms of concerted opposition. That being said, we're moving towards the Alpha Cap. At the very least, if I cannot find and kill the enemy destroyer, I will flip a cap circle, thereby putting further pressure on that ship to come back. Now, he looks like he's in the Charlie Cap. Maybe. It says contested. And so, he's in the Charlie Cap, maybe leaving the Charlie Cap, because we have friendly ships in the Charlie Cap. There are torpedoes out in the Charlie Cap. So now I know, generally speaking, where the red team destroyer is. And he did kill one of our teammates. So he has three kills. I have three kills. He's the best ship on their team. I'm the best ship on our team. Perhaps we'll get to duke it out for destroyer supremacy here at the end of the match. All right, continuing to move out. And, you know, don't get me wrong, going back to the commander for just a quick second. I do have blue Furiora. Um, Blue for yours is probably 15 and 2. Um, my Von Spee is fully maxed. I'd recommend Von Spee over Blue Furiora. Unless you are trying to do a specific build, building into the speed, I don't think German destroyers are really that fast. So I would not do that. Now we know the enemy destroyer is in our cap. He is coming our way. So I am ready. I'm going to launch one preemptive torpedo. Maybe see if I can get him to kind of show himself. Uh, but we're going to head to the other side of this island over here. And I'm going to launch another torpedo there. Again, I'm just trying to get the enemy ship off guard. Make him do something he doesn't want to do. And then I can take advantage of that to finish him off. Alright, continuing to use the island for cover. Believe it or not, I am looking at the RDF indicator. I've already said one million times, Wargaming, could you please make the RDF indicator a little more visible. A little bit. Just put an up carrot and a little bit of black in the line so I can definitively see where it is at. I don't think it's a whole lot to ask. Not to mention, it's probably in its current state a violation of the American with Disabilities Act. All right, move, <laughs> moving around the island, just about to get a base cap. There is the Izokazi. We light him up, we shoot torpedoes, we get an assisted base cap. Turret's coming around, he is taking a little bit of damage from off screen. We're lighting him up with HE and missing, totally missing. We're shooting torpedoes as my teammates continue to damage. There's our first good salvo, take about almost half of his health. Second salvo, another half of his health. Third salvo, and... I get kill pinched. Well, you live by the kill pinch, you die by the kill pinch. All right, here we are in the victory screen. First blood medal, high caliber medal, 93,557 total damage, 10 big torpedo strikes, three kills, a solo base cap, and assisted base cap. We ended up with a rather pedestrian 176,897 silver and over 6,200 ship XP and commander XP. There we are at the top of the board, 2,236 base XP, two medals, three big kills, leading the way for our team down tier. A GG to the Izokazi, but you had no chance, sir. Not in this match. All right, really quickly, here's the maxed out Maximilian von Spee. Here is the skill I'm speaking of. On Sunset, I did a whole video just talking about how great On Sunset was before. I'm just reiterating to you that that skill will turn your Z-44 from a pedestrian destroyer to a destroyer that is dangerous, especially if you're using a highly ranked Erich Bai and a highly ranked Deng Shichang. Anyway, that's the video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to uh, maneuver around the screen here and talk about all sorts of stuff. But there's the concealment again. It is worth it. And I recommend this commander for the Z44.